Happy holidays, y'all. I'm actually out in West Virginia at the National Radio Quiet Zone, but if you thought you were going to get away from your online responsibilities, well, the hotel still has Wi-Fi, so we're back for another Starbase summary. Kicking it off with removal of the SpaceX sign out there, Space Exploration Technologies, as we joked in the last video, is going to put their full proper name up on the sign to avoid any confusion, and they're going to need a much longer wall. We expect Space Exploration Technologies Incorporated. Yeah, they're not gonna do that. That's, we, already, we already did that joke. Just removing it, uh, the top comment from last video was that the Department of Government Efficiency should review how many times they change their signs out at Starbase, but it's Elon's money, it's not the government's money. <laughs> so let's see what's happening out here. Working on the orbital pad A, you can see the scaffolding and everything up around it. There are the chopsticks over there as well. Interesting chopsticks coming up in the uh, latter part of the video. I did read the section headings before I started talking, but kicking it over to the second over the launch mount. A lot of folks talking about that water-cooled plate on top. There's continued installation of the water-cooled plate. I saw people who said, oh, we've known this for weeks and stuff, but here is the actual visual evidence of the installation of that plate. Now there's that flame deflector construction that is continuing over in that same area. Be interesting to see how and when that rolls out. And some piping, it looks like. It says these will make up the bucket. So... There you go, water for a uh, deluge all around the second pad. It'll be really interesting to see how that all comes together as it rolls down the road. Another shot here of the OLM. They took down the banner. The banner didn't last, like, what, a day? What did they do with it? Is it in somebody's, like, garage now? They're too tall to fit on the wall in a garage. But continuing work on the other OLM which is always good to see. There were those pipes rolling into, that's actually the, uh, that's the assembly yard. That's the gate for the assembly yard. And another wide shot over here from Jack showing the flying buttresses. I don't know if those are actually flying buttresses on the outside of the uh, building, but also shots of the second OLM work. We're keeping an eye on that because it's really interesting to see exactly what changes time to time and so almost every time they drive by, they'll stop and grab a quick shot of it. But here's some time-lapse traffic up and down Highway 4 of the launch site. The diggers are still working there. That closer tower is Pad B. Hopping over to Orbital Pad A again, you can see lifts going up and down, as usual. All right, so this is a thing. The ship lifting pin sockets are being reinstalled. These are the parts that, uh, I don't know if stabilize is the right terminology there, but putting them there on the chopsticks so they can help with the ship lifts. Oh, that's interesting. They can actually move the bottom around there. It wasn't fixed in position. It's just held up with the crane, but the wire looks really thin. I don't know if that's just like a scale thing, or why does it look like they're holding the thing up with fishing line? Clearly they're not, but... Anyways, I think it's just the scale of the people that makes that cabling look really thin. Got some welding happening over on the booster quick disconnect hood, it looks like. Taking a little bit of a break. Ah, yes, temporary structure delivery. So we've seen parts like this installed before. Not installed, but temporarily used before when they were putting the chopsticks on the first tower. And so I think the best guess, or probably a pretty good guess before we see these actually end up somewhere, is that this may be sort of the installation jig, gantry, assistive device, whatever you want to call it, for mounting the chopsticks on the second tower. Now, I think here I did talk with Thomas, and uh, we are going to see a quick little shot of what these look like assembled in the past. Let's see if we hop to that in just a second. But all of these big parts that are bolted together to sort of support the structure in various uh, positions as they bolt it together, so they're not having to hold it with the crane. I don't even know if bolted together is the right terminology there, but you don't want the chopsticks hanging from a crane for days on end, even though it is a big sort of, uh, wow. They just built that. <laughs> they're tearing the actual beam down. I guess they need a taller entrance here. 
I wonder if they're just going to expand this around. This used to be an entrance, and they literally just poured this sort of formed concrete in, and they have a jackhammer thing up there cutting it out now. It wasn't just the sign. Maybe what they need is uh, a taller entrance. We sort of joked about that when they put that little overhead... It's not an arch, it's just flat. But they put that, that thing above the entrance. They're like, hey, you can't fit ships or anything into there. Why are they putting a bar across the entrance? And here they are removing the bar. They jackhammered out both ends and must have cut the rebar. Anyways. <coughs> Pharaoh Bag... Oh, what? Pharaoh Baghdad. Is this the mouth of the Rio Grande? Was that the lighthouse on the Mexican side there? Jack must have been getting a beach day if that was actually what I think it was. It did look like the water was going all the way across, but I don't know the exact perspective. Yeah, look at that. That is the actual Boca Chica. The little mouth of the Rio Grande and the lighthouse there is on the uh, Mexican side of the Rio Grande there. Interesting. Jack went all the way down the beach, as far south as you can go on Boca Chica Beach. Huh. Getting some shots from some different angles all the way down that way. We don't see this angle very often, but that is sort of the uh, product. Yeah, the production site, the high bays, mega bays there. Here's an equipment cover being installed. We've seen a couple of these to sort of protect the equipment from launch, FOD, flying, <laughs> flying object debris. I guess it's foreign, and then it starts flying, and then it's flying object debris instead of foreign object debris. Still working on the acronym video, I think. But another shot of orbital pad A. People for scale in the upper left-hand corner. Really was curious, uh, are the scaffoldings there really just safety railings? I mean, they're only up to safety railing height, right? And they just go around the flat top part of the OLM. Do they have kick plates? I wonder if they have, like, toe plates or kick plates on the bottom of them. <laughs> if they are actually serving the function of railings, they probably should. But a couple people commented that before when we were asking about, you know, why are those all not the, all the way out on the edge or not. Here's the chopsticks carriage, the black part that's sort of going to the left, getting some attention as well. The big, every time I say this, people try to correct me in the comments, block and tackle or sheaves or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that all of the... Cable turns from a single cable, to say it accurately, go through the top of the chopsticks carriage there. There's that tower that was leaning over. It says it's been repaired, but honestly to me it still looks like it might be leaning a little bit to the left. Got knocked over by the force of the launch. Oh, there's an interesting shot of the elevator entrance, that service elevator that goes up and down the center of the tower. Nice. There's some work on the tank farm expansion here. Just different shots of the hippos. Still getting plumbed in. You can see they still have some, technically they're blinds or covers, right? Covering the ends of the pops there. Aha! Okay. So here over near the second pad, they're assembling some of those red pieces we saw earlier in the video, right? And let's see how these sort of come together and are they actually going to be used to support the new set of chopsticks when they're installed. But look at all the red pieces here being put together in this, shall we say, configurable temporary support structure, right? You don't need to build it from scratch. You just take these prefabricated pieces and sort of bolt them together in roughly the shape you need. Okay, reference from 2021, nice. So there is the first set of chopsticks and the red structures, the red temporary structures that were sort of supporting the chopsticks there. So that's what we think is happening with those temporary red structures over near pad B, which might mean that the chopsticks are rolling out soon. Hmm. This is pad B, the second tower, because there's no weather mast in the middle of it up on the top. Same sort of basic shape with the carriage or the, the pulley system and stuff up there. But it is coming along nicely. And with the installation of those red structures, or I guess configuration of those red structures, we may see the chopsticks moving out and start to get attached to that second tower sooner rather than later. There's the chopsticks carriage. Still have scaffolding around it, so I think a thing to watch for will be all the scaffolding to be removed from the carriage itself. Ah, and inside of the buildings here, looks like B-15 getting lifted onto a thrust simulator. 
Couldn't see the thrust simulator there, but you can see the booster getting lifted. There's nose cones inside the star factory on the nose cone rotisserie. They have the little work platforms, and they can rotate the entire nose cone around so they can work on the tiles. I really wonder what uh, manages or what dictates the order they put the tiles in. Like, clearly there's some structural dips and stuff around that, and then the tiles are in the middle. Are they testing these? It's like a big puzzle piece, right? But I really do wonder what causes... That's the forward edge of a flap, I bet you, is what that little thing sticking up in the middle is. It's like a little garage for your zipper on your snow jacket, right? You zip it up and it like goes into... That's like the front of edge of the flap where the hinges goes into that. I really do wonder if that's what it is or if I'm just making that up. You'll tell me in the comments, I'm sure. You know what I do. I don't sit here and try to like script this or exploit every single thing perfectly. I'm literally just watching the video for the first time. Sometimes I read through the headlines before I talk about it. But my name is John Galloway. Massive thanks to Mary and Jack and all the SBL ops out there in the field getting all of this captured. That's going to do it for now. We're going to have a couple of these next week as well, but we will see you nerds later. Thanks for watching, y'all.